Uh, today is the 5th of February, our first February meeting, and the theme for this month is Peace and Conflict Resolution. Uh, Linda McDaniel will lead us in singing God Bless America, and following the pledge, Johnny Harvey will give the invocation. God bless America, land that I Absolutely, I do that. Yeah. Okay, anybody else got something they wish 
to say yes sir loudly or come up
couple other things. RLI is a week from Saturday. That's in uh, Columbia, and that's a training session, and it tells you about the history and why Rotary is such a good, good organization, etc. If you haven't been there, I would urge you to go. I haven't been there, and I'm going. And if we send uh, four people, the, uh, the fourth one goes free, the other three pay, the club pays for it. So you go early in the morning, leave here about like 7, and you get home about 5.30. It's a one-day event, it's in Columbia, and you can register online, or if you don't want to do that, you can see Mr. Sunshine here, because he's in charge of getting people uh, to that organization, and we're working hard to do that. So see uh, Chick after the meeting, give him your name, and we'll get you registered, and work out a carpool, et cetera. Okay, all that being said, Dick Kruger. John Valentine. Come on up here, John. He had his, he had his hand up first. Okay. <laughs> uh, it's my pleasure to make an announcement on behalf of our club directors of our club's endowment fund. We had a very good year last year, and it performed very nicely. And because of that, we could be a little more generous than we had in years past. And it's my pleasure now to make a presentation to the group.
Okay, now UVM, University of Vermont, was unique in its day for having no religious affiliation. In 1836, they introduced a smoking ban on the campus, which caused considerable protest. The Lambda Iota fraternity was chartered in 1846, and they instituted the policy of mandatory smoking during their meetings. The smoke <laughs> as, as it was said to be as, so thick that you couldn't even see across the room. And their symbol was the owl, so they have the smoking owls. Now, Paul Harris pledged that fraternity in 1885. By all accounts, he was charismatic and well-liked. But the UVM president, Matthew Buckham, he was a Sigma Phi alumnus, and he wanted to curtail Linda Iota's pranks. <clears throat> Paul and a few of his friends went ahead and painted a statue of Lafayette, and that got him placed on probation. In the fall of 1886, some pranksters rolled a cannonball down the main street, which struck a cow and broke her leg. President Buckham rounded up all the usual suspects, including Paul, and they were all expelled. Now, Paul Harris claimed that he was actually not guilty of this particular act, but, it, but that his overall performance certainly warranted the punishment. So there you have it. A little uh, history about our founding father. Thank you, Mr. President. <laughs> okay, Johnny Harvey has a few words. I uh, just wanted to remind you that we're getting ready to kick off the crab race, which is April the 18th. We will have a meeting tomorrow night at Harvey Barbershop for those individuals who are interested in helping us with the crab race. All are welcome. Uh, if you've got the screen, you will come in and, and help you the sponsors. So we will be coming out and with uh, sponsor information and all that in the very near future. And it looks very cool to be all the companies. Thank you. Thank you, Johnny. Mike Kaiserling. Uh, next week we're going to have our Valentine. And I need an account of those that have remembered to ask for their spouse to attend. Raise your hand so you have a hand count right now and so we can get flowers for the spouses, okay? Raise your hand way up in the air for trying to bring the spouse. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, guys. And I'm going to read your list of names of the ladies that we've invited to come who are willing to perform. Rotary members, and if there's anybody that I missed, Please see me afterwards so I can call them and invite them. So far, we've contacted Sally Pringle, Jamie Redford, Mary Peterson, Renee Levin, Marguerite Garrett, Peggy Gay, Carolyn Davis, John Hastings, <coughs> Peg Flanagan, Susan Grattenbauer, uh, Deanna Stevens, and <coughs> Alice Harvey. If you can think of anybody we missed, please see me after the meeting so I can get in touch with them. Thank you. Thank you, Mike. Appreciate it. One final item before we get to our guest speaker. We have a uh, very, very nice thank you note from the Good Neighbor Clinic. Uh, they've been doing very well and using our the money we donate quite well. It seems they're about 22% higher in hours compared to last year, and so the money is helping them service more people in a timely manner. And, you know, We'll give them money again this year, probably if the board decides, and I'm sure they will. But the uh, the good neighbor thank you note will be right here if you'd like to read it. It's very very heartening, a good note, and it's a good indication of what our money does when we give it to good people. And all that being said, talking about good people, I'd like to call on Nick Hunt to introduce our guest speaker. Thank you, sir. Appreciate it. Um, I think you're going to really enjoy our speaker today. Uh, she's been a friend of mine for some time, Victoria Smalls, and she's a native of St. Helena, Ohio. She majored in health and physical education at South Carolina State in Orangeburg, played basketball. <laughs> Did you, you go to Beaver High? She graduated from Beaver High. 
Uh, she also studied early childhood education at U.S.